Hello and welcome to a short lesson on rearranging formulae. I'm going to look at nine examples of rearranging formulae and we'll look at simple techniques to start with but gradually we'll cover all the techniques you're expected to be aware of and then after the nine examples we'll have a short summary of all the techniques involved. Example one V equals IR Right, this is a formula to do with electricity, voltage, current, resistance. Let's suppose we want to change it around to make R the subject. Well, this is as easy as it gets because all we've got to do is divide that equation through by the I, and that will isolate the R. So V divided by I is equal to R. However, if we ask to make R the subject, then it's better to write the R on the left-hand side when we're finished. V over I. Okay, moving on to example two. I equals PRT divided by 100. Simple interest formula. And let's suppose we want to make T the subject of that formula. Now here's our first example of an equation with a denominator. And we get rid of that denominator by multiplying the equation through by 100. So that will give me 100i is equal to PRT. And finally, we isolate the T by dividing by how many T we have, PR of them. So we just divide the equation through by PR to give a final answer of t equals 100i divided by pr. Okay, two simple examples to start with. Let's move on now and look at our first example where brackets are involved. P is equal to 2L plus B. This is a formula for the perimeter of a rectangle. Length and breadth being L and B. Let's suppose we're going to make L the subject. I'm going to offer two solutions to this because what we might do first is divide through by the 2 to get the L plus B, the bracket, on its own. So we can say P divided by 2 is equal to L plus B. And I don't really need the bracket anymore if it's not being multiplied by 2. Uh, so to get L on its own, I just have to take the B to the other side of the equation. P over 2 minus B is equal to L. And so L, I'll rewrite L on the left-hand side, is P over 2 minus B. Let's have a look at this particular formula again. I'll call this one 3a. So we begin again with p equals 2l plus b. But this time, instead of dividing by 2, I'm going to expand the bracket. So I get p is equal to 2l plus 2b. Now then, I want to make l the, the subject so let's get everything that doesn't involve L to the other side. P minus 2B when it goes across is equal to 2L. Which means that L is the left hand side divided by 2. Now it's important to realise I'm dividing the whole of the left hand side by 2. So I'll write my final answer is L equals P minus 2b divided by 2. Now it may look different to the answer on the left hand side but in fact it's exactly the same. If I divide the top two terms in turn by 2 I get p over 2 minus 2b over 2 which is just minus b. It's not a case of one's better than the other it doesn't matter which way you do it. Moving on now to example 4 
v equals one third pi r squared h. That would be the volume of a cone of height h. And what we're going to make the subject this time, this time we're going to make r the subject of the formula. Now it's got r squared in the formula we're looking at. What we need to do is first of all isolate the r squared. Get rid of the denominator first by multiplying the equation through by 3. So we get 3v is equal to pi r squared h. Now isolate the r squared by dividing through by how many we have, pi h of them. So we've got 3v over pi h is equal to r squared. And now all I have to do is take the square root of both sides of the equation. Make sure you take the square root of the whole fraction, not just the numerator. So it's the square root of pi, 3v over pi h is equal to the square root of r squared, which is r. Final answer. r is the square root of 3v over pi h. Example 5. A is 2 times the square root of b squared minus 2. And we wish to make b the subject of this formula. The first thing I'm going to do is isolate the square root sign. So if I divide the equation through by 2, I get a over 2 is equal to the square root of b squared minus 2. Now at this point I can square both sides of the equation. If the left hand side equals the right hand side then the left hand squared will be the same as the right hand squared. So squaring the left hand side I get a squared over 4. a over 2 times a over 2 is a squared over 4. If I square the right hand side it simply removes the square root sign for me. Next, isolate the b squared. So we get a squared over 4 plus 2 is equal to b squared. And fi finally, we take the square root now of both sides of the equation. So I've got the square root of a squared over 4 plus 2 is equal to b. And I'll write the b on the left hand side. What I could also do, it would be fine to just write it as it is, but what I could also do is I could put the two terms under the square root sign on a common denominator of 4. So that would give me a squared plus 8 over 4. And then the square root of a fraction is the square root of the numerator over the square root of the denominator. So I could basically write that as the square root of a squared plus 8 all divided by the square root of 4, which is 2. But it would be perfectly okay to leave the answer as this line here. Example 6. v squared equals u squared plus 2as. Well-known formula from physics where v is the final velocity, u is the initial velocity, a is the acceleration and s is distance. And I'm going to make u the subject. So first of all I need to isolate the u squared which involves taking the 2as to the other side of the equation. So v squared minus 2as is equal to u squared. Now I simply need to take the square root of both sides of the equation. But it's the square root of the whole left hand side. To give a final answer of u equals the square root of v squared minus 2as. 
What you have to be careful with here is not to take the square root of individual terms. You can't just take the square roots off and say v equals u plus the square root of 2as. Only take the square root of the whole of the left-hand side of the equation and the whole of the right-hand side of the equation. Example 7. T equals 2 pi times the square root of L over G. That's the time period for the swing of a pendulum of length L. And I want to rearrange it to make L the subject of the formula. So, first thing I'm going to do is isolate the square root sign. So I'm going to divide the equation through by 2 pi. And I get t over 2 pi is equal to the square root of L over G. Now, to get rid of the square root sign, I square both sides of the equation. So it's t over 2 pi times t over 2 pi, which is t squared over 4 pi squared. Multiply fraction by itself, multiply the numerators, t times t is 2 squared, and 2 pi times 2 pi is 4 pi squared. The right hand side just becomes L over G. And now to get L on its own, I simply have to multiply the equation through by the G. So we get GT squared over 4 pi squared. And as always, if we're asked to make L the subject, we should end up with it on the left hand side. Final answer, L equals GT squared over 4 pi squared. Right, moving on to our last two examples. Example 8. Y equals 5 plus X divided by 1 minus X. And we're going to make X the subject of this formula. Now this is our first example where the new subject occurs more than once in the equation. However, the first thing we do is get rid of the denominator. So multiply the equation through by 1 minus x. Need to put a bracket around it because I'm multiplying y by 1 minus x. And that will be equal to, well, what will be left on the right hand side is just 5 plus x. The denominator is now gone because we've multiplied through by it. At this point, we expand the brackets. So y times 1 is y, y times minus x is minus yx equals 5 plus x. Now what we need to do is get all the terms involved in the new subject x to one side and get all the terms that don't involve x to the other. And I'll choose to bring the x's to the right where they'll be positive because if I bring them to the left, I'll end up with minus yx minus x. So let's say y minus 5 when it comes across is equal to x plus yx. Now at this point, I factorise the right-hand side where the new subject is, because x itself will be a common factor since I've taken all the terms involving x to the right-hand side. So rebuild the expression, x times 1 gives me x, x times plus y gives me yx. And finally, the last step to isolate the x is to divide by the bracket, to divide by the new factor we've created. So it's y minus 5 divided by 1 plus y. So I'll we'll write the final answer as x equals y minus 5. And let's write them in the same order, y plus 1 instead of 1 plus y. Not that it matters. Right, final example. This, one's an, this page is an important page, so I'm going to have another example similar to example 8. Let's say f is equal to uv over u plus v. And we're going to make u the subject. So this is similar to the last one in that 
the u occurs twice in the equation. What do we do first? Get rid of the denominator. Multiply up by the u plus v. So I get f times u plus v on the left hand side is equal to uv. Next we need to expand the bracket so we get fu plus fv is equal to uv. Right, now I want all the terms involving u to one side and all the terms that don't involve u to the other. Let's just remind myself that's, that's a u. So we'll bring the u's this time to the left hand side. fu minus uv is equal to minus fv. And I can now factorise out the u and I get u times f minus v is equal to minus fv. So u is equal to minus fv over f minus v. It's okay like that, or we can get rid of the minus sign on the top. If I multiply that fraction top and bottom by minus 1, it doesn't change it. Minus fv multiplied by minus 1 would be fv. And f minus v multiplied by minus 1 would be v minus f. So either of those answers are acceptable. Right, we'll now use another five examples to illustrate the techniques we've been using. First of all, how to deal with denominators. Let's suppose I've got a formula r equals v over i, and I wish to make i the subject. Well, we may well end up with denominators in our answer, but if they're in the original equation, we usually have to get rid of them to make any progress. So let's multiply the equation through by the denominator and we will get IR equals V. Now to make I the subject at this point, all I've got to do is divide the equation through by R. Sure enough, I do end up with a denominator in the answer. Second one, square roots. Isolate square roots and then square both sides of the equation. If we've got something like k is equal to 4 times the square root of lg, and let's suppose we, we wish to make l the subject, then first of all isolate the square root. So divide the equation through by 4. And we get k over 4 equals root lg. Once we've got the root on its own, we can square both sides of the equation. k over 4 times k over 4 is k squared over 16. And that will be equal to square root Lg, and you get Lg. And then to make L the subject now, I just need to divide that equation through by g, and we get k squared over 16g. So there's an example of how to deal with square roots. Let's just clear the page. <coughs> I move on to look at brackets. Suppose I have 3x minus p is equal to 2x plus q and we wish to make x the subject. Well, the advice here is to expand, to separate out the different terms. So 3x minus 3p is equal to 2x plus 2q. And then at that point, we bring the x's to one side, 3x minus 2x when it comes across is equal to 2q, plus 3p when it goes across. And the left hand side is just x to give us our final answer. x is 2q plus 3p. So whenever we have brackets, 
we normally have to multiply them out. Part four, powers of a new subject. Isolate, then take the appropriate root of both sides of the equation. If we've got something like k equals pm r cubed, and we wish to make r the subject, so we have a power of the new subject rather than the subject itself. Well, first of all, what we do is we isolate r cubed. So k divided by pm is equal to r cubed. Now at this point, we take the appropriate root of both sides of the equation. If we've got r cubed, we'll need to take the cubic root. So a little three there, cubic root of k over pm will be equal to the cubic root of r cubed, which of course is r. And now r is the subject. One more to go. Right. Multiple occurrences of new subject. Take all terms involving the new subject to one side of the equation and all other terms to the other side. Well, let's have a specific example to deal with. Suppose I have h equals k plus 2 over k plus 1. And we're going to make k the subject. Well, here we're using some of the earlier sections. First of all, we've got a denominator, so let's get rid of that. h multiplied by k plus 1 is equal to k plus 2. Now we have a bracket. Let's get rid of that. hk plus h is equal to k plus 2. And now we're ready to accept the advice in section 5. Take all the terms involved in the new subject to one side of the equation and all the other terms to the other side. So if I bring the two terms involving k to the left hand side, hk minus k when it comes across is equal to 2 and take the h to the other side because it doesn't involve k uh, and it should actually be minus h over that side. Factorize out the new subject, the k, and that will be h minus 1, and that's equal to 2 minus h. And finally, having done that, divide the equation by the new factor created, so k is equal to 2 minus h divided by h minus 1. Right, that concludes this lesson on rearranging formulae. There'll be a transcript on the website and an exercise with very similar questions to the ones we've been doing here.